Welcome to The Cutting Room Floor, a weekly podcast of the teaching team at High Point Church, where we talk about sermons, sermon prep, and things we wish we could say on Sunday morning. All right, welcome to episode 22 of The Cutting Room Floor. Uh, My name is Nick Stoller. I'm the associate pastor here at High Point Church, and I am uh, with Mike Willis, who's on our teaching team. Good to be back with you. And we also have two special guests here for you. I'm going to introduce Megan Tedder, who's a Christian counselor here at High Point. She works through Arise Counseling. She combines science-backed theory with the Holy Spirit, and she works with ages 13 and up. In her office that's located here on the campus at High Point, she's also passionate about speaking, writing, guiding others to experience Jesus in their everyday lives. If you would like to reach out uh, to Megan, you can uh, get a hold of her, arisecounselinglw at gmail.com. Megan, welcome to the cutting room floor. I am so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. We're excited to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. We know that uh, you have an amazing husband, Clint, and yes. two amazing children. Tell us a little bit about that. I, uh, yeah, I have a great husband. I love him a lot. His name is Clint Tedder, and I have two cute little babies, a three-year-old and an 18th-ish month old. Maybe 19, uh, but she's great, and I am counseling here, as you already said, but I've been going to High Point off and on my whole life, depending if I was living here or not. And it's just an honor to be able to be a part of this group of people and um, get, get to learn from this teaching team. It's a gift for sure. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you. And we are so happy to have you part of what we do here at the church. Tell yeah, us a little more absolutely. about um, Arise Counseling. What do you all do there? Arise Counseling. So myself and my friend and colleague, Audra Downey, um, counsel here on the campus. Um, and we work with ages 13 and up, and we work with all kinds of different um, situations. So anxiety, depression, marriage, um, parenting, uh, anything really that you feel like you need to walk in the door for, we are willing to help you. And if we are not equipped to help you with a certain specific thing, we will hold your hand and guide you where you need to go. Um, But we just have a passion for people and introducing them to the ultimate counselor and the ultimate healer. And it's, it's honestly been such a cool, um, and humbling experience to be able to counsel in a church because it feels like holy ground really. Um, because you open up that space for the Holy Spirit to enter in and he does. So yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> that's, well, and it's been, it's, it's, it's made a big difference around here. And I know for the life of our church, it's been a, an amazing resource to have. And so we're glad yes. to have you here for sure on the show. We also have Dr. Carrie Richards. Hello. Who is here. She is the director of Providence um, Academy. And she's also the leader of our women's group, High Point Women's. And will you go through just a little bit what's happening with the school and where we're at going into year two for Providence Academy? Sure. Yes, we are starting year two, August 12th. So mm-hmm. excited. We are adding sixth grade this year. We have a building that's almost complete, and we have a little over 170 students that are going to be in our school this year. We're full in all the grades. We have all of our staff. We're ready to go. So That's exciting. Yes. And I know with uh, with our women's ministry, that has been such, again, another amazing thing that's happening here at the church. It has Thanks. grown immensely. That's something the Lord placed on your heart, um, what, about three or four years ago, I think. Is yes, that right? Yes, about then. And it's been growing immensely. You have a great mentorship program that you guys um, that you guys run. Tell us a little bit about that. We started our mentorship program back in the spring, and we have almost 30 people who are part of that, either a mentor or a mentee. Mm-hmm. And we have a great curriculum we got from Passion City Church in Atlanta. And they kind of laid the groundwork for all of that for us. It was really easy. And we've just heard some really amazing stories with the mentors and the mentees and just the relationships that are being built. And it's just, it's definitely a God thing. That's awesome. And then you got you and Melanie Blue are also running a, a, another podcast headed out of High Point Church that is called Higher Ground. Correct. Uh, what episode? I think you guys are on episode. Is that episode 10? We just finished recording our last two for this section. Okay. Um, so I think the live one is 11. Okay. And then we, I think, have gone through 12 recordings. We're taking a break for the month of August, and then we'll start back up in September with a new series. So if you're looking for another good resource, that is Higher Ground. You can find that um, on Spotify for sure. And we're working on getting that 
into Apple Podcasts and several other places. So we are excited to be in week three of Romans 8, The Power of the Gospel. Pastor Jack had a month off. And then he preached one Sunday here, and it was an amazing, yes. just <laughs> packed so service. Uh, so we're excited to go into that. Guys, what were some things about this message that Jack delivered on Sunday that really, uh, really stood out to you? I can start. So um, he was going from verse 12, uh, where it talks about brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. And he talked about the the what that means, the motivation that we should have. And, um, you know, it really just drove us into that whole desire for us to live according to the spirit instead of according to the flesh. Yeah. Something we've talked on the last couple of weeks as well, but it just kind of took it further that because of what Jesus has done for us and what's available to us now, this is how we should live. And he just, you know, drove that home. Um, one of the things that, that jumped out to me was the whole part where you get down uh, a little further and he's talking about that because of that, we're heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. And just this whole idea of being adopted into sonship. Yeah. And that if a man didn't have any sons, he could adopt someone in and they would be granted part of that inheritance. And he applied that to the fact that that's what we've been offered through Jesus. And that just was really impactful for me to think about that. Yeah, there were a couple of things for me off the top. I, I know he def- he defined three different enemies being uh, the, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Mm-hmm. And then he spent some time, how, how does the gospel help us overcome the world? and uh, how it helped us overcome the flesh. And then uh, he didn't touch how it overcomes the devil. I think that's my job next week. But uh, how he overcomes the world was a big, I I just like how he separated those things that help us see like the different battles that we have can sometimes be overwhelming in different ways. But when we realize that Christ has overcome it all, that we have a strength and a power that goes beyond our own strength and power that we can depend on, that is an amazing fact and an amazing faith to have. And then the other thing that really got me was how he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Yes. No one would be ashamed yeah. of the cure for cancer, but you right. almost have to define that. Such a that. Great line. Yeah. that was a big piece. What about you, Carrie? I, I really liked where he was talking about claiming your allegiance. Mm-hmm. And after you have accepted Christ, that you are claiming the allegiance to him and what that really means and how um, for him, he talks that he has the desire to be holy and it's in his heart that he wants to do that. And I think that what he was talking about with all of the different examples, how um, we kind of still let the world get into us and we're fearful and um, sin is still trying to get at us, but our alliance should be with God. And so we should strive every day to be more holy and be more deserving. Uh, we can't we can't work our way to that salvation, right. but God bought us yeah. and we should definitely be wanting to pledge our allegiance to him in everything we do, no matter how hard. And he talks about the struggles that we're going to have in life, but God is our savior right? and we should be wanting to do anything we can to be more like him. Right. That, I mean, this has been, and again, this whole series has been great, but this past Sunday really did. It hit home. It was, I went home like licking wounds yeah. <laughs> because it was, it was very, very convicting. What was something for you, Megan, that stood out for you? I just love how the truth just always brings a fresh perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, everything Jack said was, could be a whole sermon series, I feel like, but I just, um, I really, suffering has been a theme that I've been kind of meditating on a lot lately. And I feel like Jack's perspective was just so, it's the tr- the Bible's perspective was just so um, life-giving and the fact that God's love is so scandalous and mm-hmm. so radical, even in our suffering. Like even the fact that we have the chance to suffer and it not be in vain is merciful. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Um, And so, and I also loved um, that absolute freedom is absolute falsehood. So everything that the world tries to tell you is freedom. Like do what you want, do what makes you happy, love what you love um, is slavery. And I love when Jack was basically asking, so how's that working out for you? How's your master? (laughs) How's your master paying you? Yeah, Um, that was helpful. Because you get to choose your master and one pays you an eternal life and one, one's going to lead you to death. So how's it working out for you? Um, That was a powerful moment for me too. Well, and they said, and, and this is on our study guide too. If you guys are looking for the study guide, you can find that at highpointlw.com. Just look for the cutting room floor 
And on this um, first question with the let's dig in portion, he put, we have an obligation, that's in quotes, we have an obligation, talk about things that we're obligated to do because of our new relationship with Christ. And that's that's found in Romans 8. Um, well, of course, that's found in Romans 8. It's also found in verse 12. Uh, so in verse 12, it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it's not to the flesh to live according to it. For, then 13, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. And that's something that is even scandalous, it seems like, in the church anymore to say that we have an obligation to put to death mis- misdeeds of the body. Mm-hmm. And that's what this question leads to. Why don't we hear much about our obligations to Christ anymore in the church? Why don't we hear about that anymore? I think maybe it's because a lot of people don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we want to be pacified a little bit. Yeah, I think Jack is a preacher that is not common because he's not afraid to make people mad. And we hear a lot of tough conversations from the pulpit and um, not all of the preachers are like that out there. Yeah. They want to pacify their people, like you said, and make people feel good, but Mm -hmm. that's not how you're going to get to heaven. If you feel good. Yeah. You got to be more holy. What's some things for you from that, uh, Mike, the obligations we have to put the death misdeeds of the body. I think that just the fact that you've got to identify these things and put them to death. I mean, that's radical to talk about that. Yeah. And I, I usually talk about this, you know, I have the privilege of leading a, an 18 to 30 year old group here. Um, I don't qualify for that age wise, but I've got four <laughs> kids that are in it. So I feel like that qualifies me. And uh, when you, I sat with them on Sunday and, and we talked about this passage and we were just talking about what are some of those things. It's really interesting to get their perspective about what that means to put things to death in your body, these desires that we have, these that come from our flesh and, and obviously do not come from the spirit. And so when you start trying to list those and identify them, uh, you almost see the light bulb go on with some people because we've got people in every area of life in between those age parameters. You know, some are married, some are single, some are new believers, some have grown up in the church. Um, so when they start talking around the table, it's always really interesting to get their perspective about that. And our world today, Carrie, you were talking about this, just doesn't really always uh, emphasize the fact that these things that you're doing are, are bad and sinful and wrong and go against God's will for you. Um, our world is telling us the opposite. You should do this. If it feels good, do it. Go for it. Uh, don't worry about you know other people and what it, what it means and how it affects you. And so um, they're, they're starting to identify that and really talk about that. And so it, you can just see how it's, opening their eyes and challenging them to think about what are some of the steps that we should take. And we got to the end of that and I was asking them, you know, as we were kind of winding up, what about this whole idea of suffering so that we can share in his glory? Yeah. And one of the things that came out was, um, and I think Pastor Jack talked about this too, you don't appreciate and understand the glory without going through the suffering part. Yeah. And uh, I'd love to hear your perspective just because you were talking about the suffering part. That, and that's so true, though. You know, we want things to be so easy. Uh, we want to come out of college and have the, the great salary and the great home and the great family and yeah. the great job. Well, right. you got to sometimes go through some hard times to get there. But when you do, you appreciate where God's brought you from and where he's taken you to. And hopefully that will motivate you to live for him in that new place that he's taking you to. Yeah. Our... Um our brains are hardwired to avoid pain and seek pleasure. Yeah, that's good. And so everything, yeah. our fleshly nature, I mean, but we were never meant to experience pain. <laughs> so if you think about that, like it's a, it's a product of the fallen world. Um, so we're on one hand, we're trying to reach heaven again. We're trying to seek this world with no pain, but it doesn't exist because sin is here and God's trying to teach us how to suffer well until he can restore us back to what we once were. Yeah, that's at. good. And so um, I think we get in our own way. I think the, yes. the yeah. flesh gets in our own way, and the mm. world is really loud and confusing, like the spirit of chaos. Mm. And that's why it's so important to be grounded in truth, because truth has nothing to do with your feelings, True. kind of like Carrie said. Um, but I think, too, like we live in a society that is so driven by what their version of success is right. and, like, numbers and what it looks like and 
if we offend people, they'll leave. And it's like, no, if you offend someone, the Holy Spirit might save their life when they go home. Like (laughs) Jesus is one of the most offensive people to ever walk the face of the planet. People, he had crowds of people following him, but he also had people trying to kill him. Um, And his version of success was totally different. I mean, he was a homeless dude who wandered around and didn't know where he was going to eat his next meal, but everything he did and said still ripples through our lives today. And so I think we're, we're, we are the reason (laughs) the church and the flesh and the world as a whole, um, we get in our own way. I think that's good. There's one thing, there's a line that he said that kind of lines up with that religion is trying to be good with a bad heart. Mm -hmm. And he, he went on to describe that that's typically how church people can become Mm -hmm. if we're not careful, uh, that we'll just jump into, uh, playing the part of a church person instead of allowing the Holy spirit to actually change our hearts. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then he said, uh, when grace comes, change comes. And I think that's true if we allow it to change us. But sometimes we'll just take advantage of the idea of grace and never allow grace to change us. Yeah. And, uh, and it's almost like we, we put ourselves in the position to um, have this facade of grace and not allow grace to really make a change in us. Um, yeah, there, there was an aspect too. He, he had said, Every moral decision you make creates an obligation, mm. which was really, oh man, that was really powerful yeah. to me because that makes every single day your willingness to follow after the Lord makes you obligated to whatever the Lord would have you do and how he would have you behave. Um, and the decisions that you make, you're now obligated to those things because you're, you're, you're operating from a different perspective. Um, so I don't know what, what other things came out for you guys, especially when it comes to the morality of it all. Uh, what's something for you, Carrie? Um, well, in that part you were just talking about with the moral decision that you make creates an obligation. Yeah. Um, one thing he talked about how, um, it can corrupt you. It can corrupt your character Mm. and something that is very important for me is my character, because if you lose it, you can't get it back. Mm. And I try, I strive to have good character and have, be a person of integrity. And when he's talking about this and things that corrupt our lives and some things that, like Megan, you were just saying, the world is saying everything is okay. And there's small things that we think there's still a sin and they're still pulling us away from God and the love of Christ. And so it can corrupt your character without you even realizing it. And just start compounding your sin and lead you astray when you're not even realizing it. So that's something I thought about. Yeah, and when you talk about having that godly character, one of the things he also said is there's nothing that God asks you to do in Scripture that cannot be done without the help of the Holy Spirit. Correct. And and when we do this, uh, I don't think or do things the way that the world does. But when that happens... I am going to experience opposition or even attack. Mm -hmm. He also talked about that the spirit-filled believer um, won't feel like we've lost anything. It's actually about what we're gaining because of this newfound faith and this new way of living. But one of the lines that really stood out to me was um, when we give in to that fear or we shrink down because of the pressure that we're seeing from the world, um, that brings fear into our lives. But he said... um, Fear will shut you up, and it will shut you down. Uh, yeah. and, and I was just like, oh, that's a good line there, because th- really that's what a lot of things happen. When we talk about this boldness, and Paul was was certainly in situations where he could have chosen the fear out. Um, in fact, you know, he talked about on Sunday in the sermon all the things that he went through, the beatings, the floggings, the, the shipwrecking, the jail time, all of those things uh, because of the gospel. But he's still going back to chapter one in Romans. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God that brings salvation for everyone who believes. And so, as a result of that, he's really that. That's what he's using to talk to us about the the, the decisions we should make as believers. On this uh, on this handout, he has: if you had to define the word glory, how would you do it? And I'll bring that up for discussion. How would you guys define the word glory? I think glory is going to be when God restores everything back to what he wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Like stepping into the world he wanted us to live in and stepping into the bodies he wanted us to live in and the relationships he wanted us to live in and and the communion with him that he wanted us to live in. 
um, and everything else is a bonus. <laughs> but I think just like the richness of his plan being fulfilled yeah. is glory. Yeah. I think about, and, and this is a roundabout way to describe it, I think, but so I had a chance to go to Japan. My brother lives in Tokyo um, or just outside of it. Not sure how that works, but he's on the Air Force base there. So I got a chance to go there. Um, and I got on the, the train to head over to where he lives from the airport and we're driving and I'm seeing all these buildings and all this thing forever. And I'm just like, wow. So that over there is Tokyo, like looking at the taller buildings. He's like, no, you're like in Tokyo right now too. And just how vast of an area Tokyo covered. And in my mind, I'm like, that's kind of glorious how much it touches and how much it almost consumes because of how big it is and how vast it is. And it, it makes me think that the honor that, that that can bring for God in the sense of wh- whatever God touches, that's part of his kingdom. And you, you are getting a taste of God, even in your own heart and even what's happening, you know, across the, the nation and, and some church somewhere that they, they, they get a chance to witness who Christ is there. Like all of that's happening because of the glory of God. Yes. And that's his glory. He is so powerful and overwhelming we, we can't do anything to change that. Like he is, the light overcomes the darkness. We, we cannot overcome who he is. He's so glorious. And it is out, outside of our control, and, and yet it's still given to us. How glorious is that? Yeah. That it, we have no control of it, yet he gives it to us. And that is a version of glory and honor that, that we, we don't even have a right to, yet he still gives it. Yeah. Um, that's a way, I think, to try to grasp what glory is. I picture a lot, kind of some visuals of what you were talking about, just a lot of blinding light because God is so much light and just yeah. darkness is not going to be able to survive around him and just awe inspiring. Mm-hmm. And just you're just wanting to automatically bow because the yeah. glory of God is so prevalent mm-hmm. when you are in that glory that you know you have no way to stand because you are not worthy. Mm. That's that's my picture. Right. That's good. And Nick, I love that you say we get glimpses of it now because the kingdom is here now. Yeah. And um, we get to cultivate that. Right. Like we get to bring his glory to earth, and it that's can good. be in the most simple, mundane ways. It, it's a family at a dinner table. It's a baby's laugh. It's right. the sunrise in the morning. It's yep. like there's – if you look around – it's really hard to not believe in something bigger than yourself. Um, and then and those are just little like reflections of his glory. Yeah. So on in his uh, study guide, that last portion there says, read first John three, uh, one through two. Let me go and do that for us. So first John chapter three, the first two verses says, see what great love the father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and that we will be as not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Oh man, that's glory again, isn't it? (laughs) Mm -hmm. That is that is a perfect picture of what glory looks like. I think, too, when he ends this passage that we were looking at in Romans 12, he talks about, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And creation is waiting in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. And he talked about that that gives you this word picture of standing on your tiptoes and you're just longing for this visual to happen. And until then... I want you to consider this. I want you to think about this. I want you to remember this. And so pay attention to those little things in life that, that kind of give you a glimpse of that. Uh, Those are the things where you see the goodness of God come in. Um, And as a result of that, that's really what helps you get through those suffering times as well. Because we know that no matter what goes on here, someday we're going to be in a place where there is a new body and no more mourning and no more pain and no more crying and no more night. Um, all of those things. And he's going to be there and he's going to be making us like we wanted to be all this time. And like he intended for us to be, you mentioned that. And so all of those things kind of come out and, and should make us go, if we've got that in front of us and ahead of us and waiting for us someday, that should motivate me. It should obligate me. 
going back to that, to live according to the Spirit. That's right. what Paul's whole message is here. He's really trying to get us to understand that in such a way that it's going to make us or move us to, to live a life of the Spirit. That's so good, Mike. And I yeah. think um, America has been in this, like, cocoon, cushion. Christianity has been really easy. Right. We yep. haven't had to You're be right. really uncomfortable for a really long time until now. There's a shift happening mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, where you can't be lukewarm anymore. But I think about there's countries in the world who their underground churches are training people how to be martyrs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like how to die and not quit on your faith. <laughs> and I think about myself and I'm like, okay, how do you have that kind of faith? And you can't do it without actually knowing God. Right. Yeah. And I think that's another thing going back to the obligations. It doesn't feel like an obligation when you're friends with him. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and like when you get to know him, like you, you want to make your dad proud. You want to make your big brother proud. Like sure. Jesus is our big brother. He yeah. died for <laughs> us to save our butts. Like, of course I want to make him proud, but I also know that he loves me no matter what, mm-hmm. but that makes me want to do even better. Like that's, <laughs> it brings up a story in my mind in college. i was in contact with a lot of mission groups that were doing a lot of things uh, because our friend group was just really involved in some some stuff like that in college. And um, one of my friends was working for an organization that would go to the Middle East and they would go to human trafficking sex trades where they were auctioning off women like they would in Bible times, kind of like the Gomer story almost. But um, what they would do is they would pose as different. They would pose as buyers, but they were really buying these women's freedom. And I thought about that, and I'm like, that's me. (laughs) Like, that's us. Like, being able to, like, by the world standards, we are used and worthless and broken, and there's no hope for us. And God said, no, I not only am going to buy your freedom, but I'm going to buy you at full price because I say what you're worth. And when you think about a loving God like that, and then you get to have a relationship with him and talk with him and grow your relationship with him, the obligation kind of, falls away and that's when the desires start to change because the spirit in you starts to change you and it goes back to you saying like how does that grace sink in and it's relationship yeah right man that's really good that's a good story too Mm -hmm. it's amazing i also love when jack talked about adoption and how that culture that was so scandalous yeah uh because usually the oldest son got all of it and if you didn't have a son that's when you would adopt someone to give your inheritance to um but not only did he have a son, but now he's adopting all of us. Right. And yeah, how exactly. Absurdly scandalous okay. that is. Yeah. And I also love too in that culture, if you had a son biologically or a daughter biologically, you could disown them because you didn't technically choose them. But if you chose to adopt someone, you could not disown them. Oh, wow. And once I realized that and I thought, wow, God's choosing us. He's choosing to adopt us. And therefore he's also saying he will not disown us and how much security comes from that. Yeah. What's something, uh, so cutting room floor is, is our title. And we always try to talk about what's something you would have liked to spend more time here. So pastor Jack's obviously not here. What's something that when, uh, you look at it, what's something you wish he would have had a chance to expound on a little bit? I think when he was talking about um, the new witness section and talking about being defeated by fear, a lot of us allow fear to consume us and we aren't, because like you were saying, Megan, the United States has comfort, it's been comfortable. We've not had to defend our faith very much, but we are getting to that point and we are getting pushback on a grand scale. And I think a lot of people are fearful of what what reactions people are going to get. Um, I had actually some negative reactions when I left the charter system to come to start Providence Academy. And um, one person in particular, they were very, very vocal about, well, your school's not going to take everybody. Well, we, we're an option. We're not for everyone. We can't be everything for everyone. But then just our standards, because we're based on a Christian environment, right? we can't lower those standards 
and that's part of the option. Right. And that is something that was um, a difficult situation, a difficult conversation that I had to have with someone that I considered a friend because they were very against what I was doing. But it was something God called me to do, and I had to. And we've not really talked a lot since, and yeah. it's sad. Yeah. But it is something that ultimately my allegiance is with God, like we talked about, that he has formed an alliance with us, he has bought us, and I have to be honoring him. So that was a tough one. Yeah, and to remain obedient to something that the Lord has called you to, yeah. even though it's going to affect the relationship that's got to be a hard decision to make, but it's, right. it's important. It is. The thing is, is that's part of the misdeeds is we'll sometimes compromise our faith just so that we don't hinder a relationship or we don't offend somebody else. But that's, that's kind of the difference. Yeah. Uh, Jesus walks into the picture and says, you know, you'll have to be willing to separate from your own family. You have to be willing to separate right. from your own life that you've built if you're going to follow after me. Yeah. And are you willing to do that? And uh, sometimes he does. He'll, he'll call us to a place that are gonna that's gonna impact those even those really important personal parts of our life. But every moral decision comes with an obligation, yeah. and that's sometimes a really tough, difficult thing. And again, kudos to you and, and to Jordan and everything you're doing with Providence Academy. That's been again amazing blessing, not just for our church community, but even for my kids. Um, it's definitely a God thing. Oh, 100%. He's totally in charge. <laughs> 100%. Uh, anything else that you guys would want to mention about uh, this past Sunday's message? It's not something that he talked about this week. It's actually something I wish he would have covered more, part of that cutting room part. Um, I've heard him, Pastor Jack, talk about this before, the promise and the proof, which can be found in verse 14, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. And so I, I shared this with that that young adult group on Sunday that – uh, the promise is, if I'm led by the Spirit, then I. the promise is that I'm one of God's children. Yeah. And the proof part is, if I'm one of God's children, then I need to be led by the Spirit of God. Oh, that's good. And so I, I've never forgotten that one. I heard him talk about that years ago, um, but I shared that with them just because I think when you, when you really grasp that and get a, the thought around, get your mind around the fact that you are one of his children— you can be led by his spirit, and therefore you can can say no to being led by the flesh. When you do that, that's what, what prompts you and motivates you and empowers you to make decisions like leaving a job that you were, were pretty successful in and starting a new school. And we didn't know what was going to happen a year ago. Absolutely we not. remember, you know, <laughs> I remember some of those early conversations with you and Jordan. Um, you know, what, what do you do? Well, I'm going to start a counseling practice from scratch, from the ground up. Um, what do you do? I'm going to leave a nursing career mm -hmm. and, and go into ministry at, you know, at this age with, with a wife and four children, yeah. you know, all of those things. I'm going to leave uh, studying to be a physical therapist to go into ministry. 25 years now I've been at this. So God asks us to take these steps of faith. And we do that based on the fact that we believe he's with us, that he's moving us, that he's calling us, and that he has greater things in store for us if we follow him by faith. And because of that, it should make it easier for me to, to leave any of those desires of the flesh behind because I know who's leading me to do it. Um, I, I don't always do that, but I, when I am, you know, spending time in the word, spending time with him, spending time with his people, that's what helps me continue to do that. And that's one of the things I challenged our young adults with was to think about what steps do you need to take this week? And they talked about finding more time to spend in the Word, understanding what I'm reading. So it was encouraging me to think about that, and it's challenging me to think about that myself. How am I making sure that I'm in the place where God's leading me, that I hear His voice, and that I'm willing to walk by faith in whatever He's telling me to do? I think part of that is also having a good support system around you Absolutely. of Christians that will encourage you to follow God when he's pushing you out there into yes. that unknown. And you got to take that radical step in faith. And then you know that these people, no matter what, are going to be part of your support. And they're going right. to help you and encourage you and be right there beside you. Something else he said, and, and he alluded to this being more of, a, you know, related to addiction, but he, he didn't just leave it there. But the line was, whatever you can't do without, that's your master. 
um, that's one that I took yeah. down. And I think it's the same, even in those situations where, you know, we feel like God has called us to something. Well, if we don't feel like we can lay that down, then what's our master at this point? You know, we're going to follow after whatever we are comfortable with that's giving us the success or, you know, that nursing, I appreciate you mentioning that like nursing was a great career for me sure, and paid the bills and then some, and I, and, and I could have kept on going and actually I could have, <laughs> Oh, there was so much money to be made. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of how it felt with physical therapy. Right. I understand. <laughs> but then you start realizing, you know, if you're going to let, if you're going to let the comfort of what your life is being just rule you, it doesn't look like an addiction, but that's what it is. Mm. It's your, it's just wow. your master. Yeah. And you're just going to live a life where when you look back, you're like, wow, that was comfortable. And instead of that was glorious, there's the difference. Yeah. Um, and so such an impactful, again, an incredibly impactful message. And it should be as it's coming from the truth and uh, Romans 8, especially. Um, any other final thoughts as we close out? I would love to hear him talk about um, just the practicality of actually connecting with the Holy Spirit. Because I think that's great. we've we've walked it and we've had mentors and we've we have each relationships with the Holy Spirit when you, but when you're a baby Christian, that is daunting. Yeah. Um, and, and right. it feels, um, like unobtainable almost, but it's not. And I would love for him to speak more into that, but also for the church to step up and share testimony too, because I think so much is learned through testimony and, and doing life with people too. But, um, yeah, I think this whole, sermon was about like being led by the spirit, but what's the practicality behind what that actually means? Yeah, I think that, I think that would have been great. And I think honestly, we talked about this, this last episode, we could spend a solid 39 weeks on yeah. these 39 oh, yeah. verses, yeah. but uh, yeah, that would have been great to hear. I think if, if for me, I, I, I would have just loved to continue. I, I love the idea of ver or chapters like this going literally verse by verse and let's just talk through it all. Um, but that would take such a long time. Uh, go ahead, Mike. The good news is you do get to continue. Hey, You're closing right. this out this coming Sunday. Well, yeah, so I've got 20 all verses. That, practical, <laughs> that practicality that you were asking for, it's a good request. Now's a good time to make that request. To go write that down. <laughs> yeah, that's what's going to be fun. This next week I get to close it out, and I'm excited. I have 20 verses ahead of me and one message to summarize all of that. But I'm excited to talk through that. Um, thank you guys for joining us during this thank conversation. You, thank you. If uh, you are yeah, looking- great to have you all. Yeah, absolutely. If you are looking for the resource, uh, resource, we are just suggesting go read Romans 8. Because again, it is so jam-packed full of so much truth and uh, revelation there. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, nick at highpointlw.com. If you want to get a hold of Megan, you can reach out to Arise Counseling LW at gmail.com and she will respond to you there. And then if you're interested in what's happening at Providence Academy, you can go to highpointlw.com and find some links there as well. Thank you all so much for listening. This has been episode 22 and we will see you guys next week. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Cutting Room Floor. If you have questions about High Point Church or want to find out more, go to highpointlw.com.